So I'm starting the recording of our Chaos Lab Working Group on September 17, 2019. So welcome everyone. Um, Valerio or Alberto, would one of you like to lead the meeting? Yeah, why not? Because I think I'm going to be the one in charge, at least of the last section, this section, this topic named experience of first user. So I can try to introduce the rest of the topic so you can start discussing. I don't know if we want to review previous meeting action items, which is the first topic, because, well, I think we spent some time the other days discussing about them. So maybe we could start directly with the news about Remote Lab. What do you think, Georg? Um, I think we can look at the action items real quick. Uh, one was for Daniel to check the GDPR status with Matt. And if I remember the email chain correctly, we just decided it's okay to share access to the chaos platform with uh, other members. So I don't know if you received your access yet, Andy. Not yet, no. Okay, so that is something we need to follow up on. Then action item for this week is for everyone to simulate new user experience. I, I for sure have <laughs> tried installing Grimoire Lab from scratch. <laughs> So happy to dive in this week. And then Sandy wanted to prepare um, some upcoming milestones roadmap information. And I don't think Sandy is here today. So maybe next week he can share that. So that's for the first bullet item to review previous meeting action items. Okay, so for the second one, I think Santi is going to connect at some point. I don't know if Valerio wants to go with the news, but I have a brief list Santi shared with me. So please, uh, I'm going to to list all the news we have in your more lab. And Valerio, if you find I'm missing something, just interrupt me and ask whatever you may want. So well, uh, first regarding Percival. Now we have search, term, search terms sorry, for each item we are generating. These terms are there because they are handy to classify items or to make searches faster. We need to go to the raw items and search for something we downloaded to check if the enrichment process or whatever is working as expected. So this is for improving searches in raw items. We have also some news in the sorting hat side of things. Now sorting hat allows to merge identities using GraphQL. So now you can use GraphQL queries to in sorting hat. And about some bugs we have been fixing. The most important one, I think, is the one related to the areas of code study, which uh, took too long to execute. And well, Valerio found the, the problem and now it's fixed. So well, basically the problem is the study was executing in non-incremental mode instead of doing in incremental mode. So almost all the time we were reaching once and again the same items. Now this is fixed, so it should be much uh, quicker. And I think it's, this is all about the, uh, the new things we have in, in Grimoire Lab. I don't know if Valerio has something What was the else. last one, Alberto? Yeah, sorry? What was the last one? The last one was a bug we have in, in areas of code study, mm -hmm. which is the one splitting git commits by file. Okay. And the bug was we were executing the study all the time against all the 
items we had for Git instead of doing it only for the new ones. It should be incremental, but uh, due to a bug, we were executing it once and again against all of the items or I almost see. all of the items. Okay. So in, in environments with, with million commits, uh, that was a, a real problem because it takes like eight hours to execute. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. And that's not okay. <laughs> yeah. So this is fixing the new release. And I think that's all, but maybe Valerio has something else. Uh, no, no, I think it, it, it's everything. Uh, you didn't miss anything. Thank you. Okay, so I okay. think we should, yep. Real quick, I tried to capture the notes and I, I feel like I missed one. Can you take a look in the minutes, make sure I didn't overlook one of the updates? I think there was a Percival yeah. update. Hello. Hey, Sean. Hey, Sean. Yeah, so I'm running late. My, so my students pair my Bluetooth keyboard to their computers. Then for some reason, it doesn't pair to mine again. And it takes me like 20 minutes to figure out what they did. So I have to put like a giant black marker on it and said, they do not because most of my students have keys in my office. So I was spending a lot of time trying to get my keyboard to figure out. Okay. Sorry. What did I miss? Uh, it's in the minutes. Sorting hat. I know what that is. It's from Harry Potter. Sorting hat does the identity manager. Yep. Yeah, I, I knew that. So it's a way to, for Andy, it's a way to think about um, how identities are managed. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I've seen a demo of it before, and I, I think the last time I talked to Jesus, there was a lot of work happening around it. Is so, there a demo screen up, or am I missing that? No, no, it's just Andy asked in the chat what sorting hat is, so we're trying to address that question. Oh, yeah, Thank you. it's cool. Thank you. Yeah. So one of the one of the key features of Sorting Hat is affiliations. So who does a contributor work for, and when they change jobs, that we reflect that correctly in the data. Okay, Alberto, I, I think we are good with the updates. Okay, so. I think about the roadmap, Santi wrote me a message. He is not joining because he had a late minute problem. So, well, maybe the roadmap is going to be something to talk about next week. Okay. And now my question is, we want to go for the OSPO and ISPO panels for a quick view of what we have right now, or do you prefer to go for the experience of first user that could be maybe more interesting, but it could take longer than the previous one. What do you think? Is the OSPO, is the, are the panel, is that discussion about showing the work that you've done or is it about what might be entailed in the panels? I think it's basically uh, showing the panels we have right now. Mm -hmm. We started last week showing, I think it was the engagement panel, and the idea was just showing the rest of them to show what we have right now and what we are thinking about uh, migrate to chaos, because if you remember, we have these panels out of chaos right now. Yeah. yeah. In a GitLab repository. I would love to see the panels personally. Okay, so yeah, I think concrete's always more helpful. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. It should be this one. And here. Yep. Well, this, this is the web page we have for these panels. I hope you are 
looking at the right window because with Zoom, I'm always not sure about what we are, what you are seeing. All I see is your Amazon shopping cart. No, yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. So, I see, uh, yep, I see the open source program office. Yeah. Well, so these are the panels. We have these community structure panels, which are already in the standard set of panels we have, but we wanted to have them here also to make sure they are under this uh, open source program office uh, set of panels. Yep. So basically, here you can see the screenshot and this is a useful panel we have. We can see it maybe better in chaos. Let me open a new tab because this was a teaser for <laughs> the last ballot on the agenda. And here we have the community and here we have this the structure panel. And this basically is uh, splitting the community in casual developers, core developers, and regular developers, depending on the number of contributions of each uh, developer. And looking at this data by quarter. The important thing about this panel is this is pre-calculated. So this is uh, run once a week and the data is static in, in that sense. And this uh, aims at uh, having a look of who are your more important developers. And it can be combined with other panels like maybe uh, demography in which you can see uh, who is uh, living the community. But you can see if people live in the community belongs to the casual or regular developers and perform some action if you need to engage them or whatever. So we have three panels for this because as this, it is pre-calculated, we need to pre-calculate this, pre-calculate it uh, overall in the sense of uh, we don't have into account organizations or projects. And then we have to do it by projects in this other panel, which is uh, almost the same in terms of visualizations. But here we have the, the projects. So the idea of this is you can click, for instance, here in Algor. And by filtering, you get the data for Algor. So this panel works in a way that you need to filter properly to, to see the data. Uh, in the panel, if you don't filter anything and you remove this, this data it makes uh, no sense at all because the thing is this has, this is an aggregation of all the data for each or uh, each project uh, pre-calculated individually. So aggregating that makes no no sense, and you need to to filter here. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. And we have the same, uh, exactly the same for organizations. So if you have, if you click on organizations uh, link, you get the same panel and you can do the same. In this case, I can do it by Viteria. And now we have the, the information about Viteria. We have the evolution through time and we have also a list of authors to understand which authors are the most active one and from which quarter to which quarter they have been active in the community. So can of I ask course, you a question? Can I ask you yeah. a question? So if I'm looking at the panel collection, that web page that you sent, are these the panels that you're showing the it was are the panels that you're showing these this list of panels in the OSPO? Some of them yeah. looked like they were the same, but some looked a little different. Yeah, they, they are the same. And okay. Uh, in fact, the the only difference it could be uh, an outdated the screenshot or something like that that sometimes happens. So if I go to this tab, no, this yeah, the overall one, which is a yeah. bit different, if you remember. Yeah. But if I go. I could click, yes. <laughs> I couldn't click in the other tab. 
you know, Zoom for me is <laughs> not working at all. So if I go for the panel by project, now we have here this uh, a screenshot that probably is uh, the new version of the panel, which is under panel collections, because it has this, um, this small help here with the link and, and so on. And that it's happening because we are not synchronized between panel collection and the standard CDLs repository. So CDLs has the same panels, but not the same version. Once we migrate the panels, what you should have is this version of the panel, which is the universal one. But the information in the panel is the same. It's just a matter of layout. Sure. So you have here the projects, here the developers, and here the help, instead of having the data evolution here. So if I look at a, if I look at that, the panel collections, you have one of those listed in there, say, as organizational diversity. Yeah. So is yeah. that? Yeah, it should be. Is that in Remora Lab? <laughs> I was, it's not in Remora Lab uh, okay. right now, in the sense it's not migrated to CDLs. I but see. I think in Chaos, we have the panel here. So you can play with the panel. This is the panel, and in this case, this can, uh, this comes directly from panel collections. So this is, or this will be the version we have here in yeah. organizational diversity. So I see. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah, so, helpful. Thank you. So those do map. They kind of map one to one. That list yeah. that you have. Yeah. Th this is the issue we need to solve. This will map one to one, but currently, at least for the community ones. They don't. Okay. So, uh, can I also yep. ask a question? Yes, so. So, I, I really like that we have in the panels at the bottom the help section. Yes. And I was thinking if um, what your thoughts are on maybe adding a section for chaos metrics or links to chaos metrics. I know that in Augur, Sean's team is putting links to the metric definitions when relevant. And maybe maybe we can do this inside the help here, or maybe we add a new visualization with this. Um, I just wanted to start the conversation on how we can tie what we see here back to the metric definition. So when people have questions, let's say about organizational diversity, they can read up on more in the resource we are creating in chaos. Yeah, I think it will be interesting to have the links either from the panel or maybe rather from the documentation just for saving a space here in the in the panel. But for sure it will be interesting to have the mapping between what we are seeing here and the metrics. And much more now we have the release of the metrics. So yeah, for me, that's uh, a really interesting addition. We could open an issue in Ingrid Moore Lab to update the documentation with, with that information. Okay, thank you. Could, could we look at the configuration of one of these panels just to see what that looks like? Yeah. What do you mean by configuration? You mean how the graphs are built? Yes, or, or for example, active organizations, 47 uh, active organizations. Okay, it, yeah. Is there like a configuration screen behind it? Yeah, if you look here at the cursor, you can click on edit. And once you click here, this here appears on the top right corner of each visualization. So you can click here and then edit visualization. And this is the screen you have, the view you have for editing the, the visualization. In this case, it's just a metric. A metric is something used in Elasticsearch. And the name, I think, is self-explanatory. So, well, 
the idea of this metric is just unit counting the author or the name. This is the name of the organization that the author belongs to. This is this information comes from Sorting Hub, this tool we talked about before, and it provides the, the name of the organization, nothing else. So by unit counting the different organization names we have for all the authors in the index, we can have this metric, in this case, the, the number of the organizations. And where are we counting this? We are counting this in an index called OSEAN. This is a bit more uh, advanced because this is not exactly an index. It is an, an alias, which means we have uh, different indexes under this alias. And we do this to be able to mix different data sources into one, even when we have different indexes for each individual data source. Uh, for instance, uh, let me go a bit uh, forward and so the, so you the discover that this is a, a part of Ivana that allows you to search the data. And here you have these results, which are the documents. These are the available fields in the index. And this name here did, is the index you are looking at. So here you can see the different indexes and alias, and you can see we have an index for Git, for Git areas of code, which is a different index because Git is based on commits and areas of code is based on, on files. And we have also GitHub issues for issues and pull requests because, well, originally in GitHub, everything is an issue. So we, we have an, an index for, for both, and then we have a field for filter and pull requests. We have IRC, Jenkins, Jira, Manifest, well, a lot of indexes. But we have also these other names like OSEAN or affiliations here on top that are aliases. And these are just uh, uh, used for or by some panels to show aggregated information across indexes. The idea is, for instance, is if I go to the panel we have for affiliations, I think is uh, here, yes. In this panel, what we want to show is the, the, the people we have in the community and the affiliation, the, the organizations we have for them in sorting hub. But well, they can be in one or several data sources. So we don't want to have a different panel for each index. But if you remember, when I go to the visualization, what I have here is this index. And Kibana only allows to have one index here. That's the reason we, uh, why we need to have these aliases. Because now, under affiliations, we have uh, a lot of different indexes. In this case, you can see Git, GitHub, and Python name. And this allows us to so the information of all these indexes in a single visualization. That's the, the reason for having analysis. It's a bit advanced, but there's no, no magic uh, under the hood. It's just a grouping of the different uh, indexes. And then what you have is uh, an endpoint that you can query. And when you query that endpoint, you are going to have results from all the different indexes. So, well, that's the idea of this aliases. And going again, oh. the, the, this was the organizational diversity. This was a, a simple metric, so it is just a number. But if we go for the pie chart, which is a bit more advanced, and it could be a bit more interesting, we have, again, the metric. This metric is, again, a unique count. In this case, is another field. This painless unique ID is a dynamic field that is computed on the fly and allows us to do some things. In this case, what we do is selecting the ID depending on the data source, because each data source has a different ID. But again, it's just unique counting. So this means just count each uh, different item we have 
in the index. But in this case, we have also these buckets. These buckets allows you to split this count into different uh, uh, buckets or groups. And these buckets, in this case, are split by terms. And these terms are based on the author of the name. You remember this field I mentioned before, because we were unit counting this. In this case, we are using the same field, but for splitting information. What this uh, is going to do is giving us this kind of data, which is for each organization name, we have a different entry, a different group. And for each group, we are going to compute the metric we have defined on top. So we have here the contributions. And what Kibana does, as we create this as a pie chart, is drawing this pie chart based on this information. So that's uh, more or less the basic configuration we have for almost every Kibana visualization. Of course, there are more complex things, but well, this is the basic. Yeah. Yep. I, I have an idea, but I want to make sure, Andy, you don't have any more questions here. Number first, thank thank you very much for that demo. That was great. Uh, I do have one more question, which I don't need to answer right now, and that is, is there documentation somewhere that that shows all of the the various indexes and and data collections? Uh, that that'd be interesting to see at, at some point, not not right now. Yeah, we have some documentation. We are trying to improve it. But at the level of index, we are trying to keep this updated here in Grimoire Lab as a hyphen ELK project. I'm going to well, I'm going to go for the documentation directory first and then I'm going to paste the link. So here we have this schema directory, and here we have a bunch of CSV files. These CSV files, for instance, this uh, one for Git, contains a description of uh, all the fields we have for, for that index. We are trying to have this uh, up to date. Sometimes we are not uh, achieving this goal, but we try. And for the, let's say, most common indexes, I'd say is up to date. For instance, this Git or GitHub or even GitLab or Gerrit. So you can rely on, on this for having some quick glance about the fields you have available in the indexes. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. But let me say that, well, this is for having a description of the fields, but sometimes you just need to find a field and you are in the, sorry, I'm trying to click again <laughs> on the tabs. Yes. So if you're in the dashboard and you are not sure about what fields are available for, fil for filtering, you can click here on add filter. And this wizard provided by Kivana allows you to select the field. So you can start typing here, for instance, uh, let's say I know we have, uh, or we want to, to find something related with author, the author name. So I suspect that it's going to be called something like author something. So I start typing, typing and I get all the fields here that start with author. And here I can see that there is one author name. As a rule of the thumb, of the thumb. If you see lowercase and uppercase, use some always the field in lowercase because this is a well a legacy thing we need to remove. But the, the idea is you can use this to find the, the field or the set of fields you may be interested in. And then you have here again the wizard showing you a list of options about the things you can do with this uh, field. For instance, you can look for a particular author. And the cool thing is that even at this point, Kiban is going to, to, to auto-complete uh, your query. So you have a list of authors here. So I can try to look for myself, for instance. Maybe I'm not here. Oh, yes, I'm here. 
So well, this is another way to, to build a filter without the need of knowing about the fields. Of course, once you have the name of the field, you can rely on the CSV to understand if the field is the one you, you are interested in. So I click on save, and this is the information filtered by me. So I have, a, I have an idea uh, for how we can maybe practice the building of a new visualization. This is an idea we had discussed last time. Um, I'm posting in the chat a link to one of our metrics, um, project velocity. And my idea is to take this time together to try to implement this value metric. That's, that's great because if I go to my first tab here, you can see that was what I was preparing these days was exactly this metric. So oh, I have okay. something to show you. It was your idea. <laughs> no, no, it's great because, well, this is pretty visual and this is interesting because there are some things we cannot do with Gmore Lab right now. So it is going to, to let us open some issues or some feature requests and maybe some discussion about uh, a set of plugins we have out of chaos that I think we should include, or, or at least we should ask to be included into chaos. So, well, uh, what I saw when I came here is that we have a very similar visualization to this one in Incubator. So we could try to uh, build something like, like this. And well, as you can see, what we have here is we request an issues in the y-axis and then commits on the x-axis. This is in logarithmic scale. And I guess the dot size in this case is the number of authors because the number of authors is here on the right-hand side. So probably this is what uh, they are using here for, for dot size. So well, first, uh, what's the the right way to to do this in in Kivita? The or first thing I see, tell us. Yeah, the first thing I see is <laughs> we have here GitHub and Git. So these are two different data sources. So well, we cannot rely in one index. If I go here for chaos, well, this is what I built, but if I go to visualize and I click this in this plus sign to build a new visualization, the first thing I have to do is selecting the type of visualization. This is the easiest step in this case because I know we want to build a dot plot. Maybe this icon is not the most accurate one to understand what a dot plot is, but well, this is the visualization we want. And now we need to select the index on top of, we are going to uh, uh, build a visualization. As I say, we cannot rely on Git or GitHub because we can rely only on one index. So for this, I am going to use the affiliations one because affiliations is an alias that aggregates all the different indexes we have in this, in this case in chaos. So here you can see that affiliations appears here. So I'm working on top of this index. And here in the metric side, we have this metric for the x-axis, another one for the y-axis, the dot size, and then the field for uh, bucketizing the information. So the first thing we want to do here is setting up the x-axis. If I click here, I can select an aggregation. In this case, for the x-axis, we have the commits. So for counting commits in Gmore Lab, we need to unit count a field that is, it, it's called hash. If you know Git, you probably know that each commit 
uh, have a hash as a hash, sorry, and by unit counting hashes, we uh, we have the, the number of unit commits we have in in total. So it is this is going to be commits, and there's the first limitation. As far as I know, this visualization is not going to allow us to set this in logarithmic scale. So well, we are going to just unit counting commits, but probably as a feature request, we could ask to the author of this plugin to include the possibility of make this logarithmic scale. So well, this is for the x-axis. Now for the y-axis, I need to add a new metric, and this new metric, it's going to be again a unit count. But in this case, the thing is a bit uh, difficult because we need to rely on some identifier that works either for pull requests and issues, but not for all the rest of the indexes we have below affiliation salience. Has is uh, good for commits because only commits uh, have has as uh, a field. And for, for GitHub, I created a, a specific field that is called painless GitHub ID. This painless GitHub ID is a field that is calculated on the fly. And I have the field here. This is a bit advanced. But well, it's not uh, very difficult to understand because what this field does is just evaluating this condition here that says if the name of the index starts with GitHub underscore, then the value of the field is going to be the unique ID we have for each item in each index. But in other case, we are not going to, uh, uh, to return anything. So this field is going to return the IDs only for GitHub IDs under affiliations index. So with this field, what I have is the possibility of unique uh, counting things that are either issues or pull requests. So this is the field I'm using, uh, uh, I'm going to use here. And this is going to be issues and PRs. So well, if I click here, I got nothing because, well, at this point, the data I'm requesting to Elasticsearch is only the number of commits and the number of issues and PRs. And this is a total number on each side and there is nothing to put into the two axes. We need to set some buckets here. So for the buckets, what we need to do is going back to here and probably these are something like organizations. So we can set this to be a terms bucket based on the, sorry, author the name, which is the field we used before in other examples. You can set it for instance, I don't remember, it was 30 or, yes, top 30 projects. Well, we can go for 30. And, well, in our case, these are organizations, but we could do it for projects. It's just a matter of changing this, this field here. And now we have the representation. But we are missing something, and it's the uh, dot size. The dot size is another metric, so I can click here in add metrics and then add the dot size. And this could be, for instance, the unit count of author, in this case I'm going to use author UUID, which is the unique identifier we use for authors in sorting term. So, well, this is uh, number and now we have here that a known organization is going to be the biggest one. And then we have here 
a lot of small organizations with uh, a small number of uh, GitHub uh, items and a small number of commits. Then we have here Viteria with a lot of both. Um, here we have University of Nebraska and University of Missouri. Here Elasticsearch. This is because we are forking some projects from Elasticsearch, Elasticsearch for it. So we have probably some comments from, from there. And well, this will be something similar to, to the metric we have here. And the limitations are first the logarithmic scale, we don't have that. Then the legend, because here there is no legend and there is no way to solve the legend as far as I know. So you need to hover the dots to see the, the numbers. And also there are some other minor bugs like these titles, these labels. If you remember, I said here some labels, but we are not seeing the labels here. So well, there are things to improve. We can build more or less the visualization we want, but we are in uh, a status that mm, in which we need some some things to, to be improved. Maybe there are there are other visualizations inside the Kibana to achieve uh, a metric similar to this one, but I think this is the most uh, similar one. And um, probably what we need to do is opening some issues to fix these things we are seeing here to get uh, the metric inside uh, Remote Lab. And this uh, reminds me that this is a visualization that was built by David Moreno, which is uh, another Viterian, and it's under uh, his own GitHub repository. And probably another thing we need to do, and probably we can add this to the notes, is proposing to have these plugins we have now, or we currently have in Gibiter, as part of chaos, as we are, as we are using it, uh, them in incubator, and I think they are uh, very interesting for for the community because these plugins are not available in standard Kibana distributions. You can install them, but uh, they are not part of the standard package. At least there is no similar plugin being open source, free open source, in Elasticsearch. So well, this is all on my side, I think, to explain how to build this. And now it's your turn to to pose questions. So I, I thought that was I thought this was really cool seeing this deployed like this. So thanks for doing this. And also giving kind of points that, that we can try to make improvements on. This is great. So the, I guess I, the couple of questions that I have is, as you built this visualization, what is the best way to make this available for folks? Maybe you were talking about that right at the end. Does that make sense? Yeah, it depends on the way you want to have this available. If you just want to have this available for checking the data, for instance, to send an email and get your community aware of the, the data you found, you can share a sort link here. So if you click here on sir, you have this link that can be sorted. And then if I copy this and paste this on the chat, now you have a screenshot of what I have here. Because in Givana everything is uh, in the within the URL, so the sort link is gonna contain everything you are looking at here. But if what you want is to share this as a, a, a dashboard, I mean as part of Sigils or as part of any other chaos uh, project, what you need to do is build a panel, include this visualization and probably some other visualization 
Then export the panel using Kidas, which, which is a tool under Chaos to export panels and uh, make a, a new PR. I think I wrote this in Seagulls under, oh, sorry, this is not the repository, this is the page. I think I wrote the contribution and the file here. Yeah, contributing MD. Um, I wrote here some information how to contribute to to Seagull. So by following this, and if you do it, probably you are going to find some things that are not well explained, or maybe something I I miss it. You can ask for them. But following these instructions, you could export the panel and make the PR to get your panel into Seagull, which is right now the, the place we have all the panels export. Gotcha. So okay. that's how the, these are the options for this, for this. Okay. And I saw that uh, Andy asked if this scripting language was JavaScript. Well, this is not JavaScript. This is kind of uh, Java. In fact, you have some Java libraries in Painless, but this is a, a scripting language made by Elasticsearch folk, and it's called Painless, and it's totally the opposite because it's a total pain writing things in Painless and testing them in Elasticsearch, but it's useful to uh, do some things on the fly and avoid to pre-index a lot of stuff to get your changes there. And I think uh, Georg is also asking if it's possible to export a table with this data. And yes, it's possible. And if I'm able to find the, yes, <laughs> the tab, you can click in this small icon here at the bottom, this up arrow, and here you have the table with the data. So you have the organization, the commits, the issues, and the number of authors. So with this, you could do whatever you want. And for exporting this, you have these two links for exporting the raw data or the formatted data. It's almost the same because formatted data is going to be CSV. Um, if I click here, I get a CSV. And then I can open this, for instance, with LibreOffice. I don't know if you can see this small window or you are still looking at my browser. No, I can see it. Okay, so well, here you have this USB. I'm not going to open it, but the idea is you have the data there. And also, uh, you don't have only the table. You can click here, this drop down list allows you to see the request. We are throwing to Elasticsearch. This is interesting. If you want to directly use the query by yourself in another script, and you can see the response. This is interesting for debugging. In case you are not sure if the data you are looking at is the correct one, or you need to know how this stuff about metrics and buckets is organized in the in the query. This is pretty useful. Is if you are used to work with Elasticsearch or even with Solar, Apache Solar, or some other tool that uh, is basically a search engine under the hood, because this allows you to understand the details uh, behind the visualization. And finally, you have some statistics that are useful to know if the delays you have are normal or maybe not. For a single visualization, is usually reasonable, but when you have a lot of visualization in a panel, sometimes these statistics are really valuable to understand which visualization is taking longer to load and probably is delaying the whole panel to load. Yeah, I think that is pretty par powerful because being able to just export the table, we can now do our own visualizations. Um, maybe we have a tool that allows for logarithmic access. And yeah, that, that was a, a great question because the the good thing about uh, Q 
Kibana, Kibito in this case, which is our soft fork of Kibana with this uh, custom visualization, some other things like this menu on top, uh, is having the data. So if you don't have the visualization you need, you can get the data directly from the dashboard. You don't need to build your own script. So that's cool because you don't need to uh, know uh, anything about uh, Elasticsearch. Uh, I have a question about the organizations and the authors. Um, I'm wondering if there's any concept of like time for that, like if an author was in one organization at one point and then they changed organizations at another point. I wonder, um, is there a way to deal with that in this or? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, another good question because in sorting her, what you can have is, uh, is exactly that. For each author, you can set the start and end date of the affiliation. So you can be affiliated to one organization for a period of time and then for another period of time, you can be affiliated to another one. What uh, is not possible is to have two affiliations at the same time. So uh, the, the dates cannot overlap. Okay. So are um, the organizations and authors on the screen right now, is that for like all time or is that for just a certain amount of time or? In, in this case, um, in, in, Kibana, in Kibana always is the same. This uh, time here, this is called the time picker, is the main filter for the data you are looking at. So here is the last five years, but if I click here, there are a lot of different time ranges. This is for quickly selecting a, a time range, for instance, one year, and the data changes for the last year. But you can go for relative uh, times. So you can set the time from some time ago to some time even in the future. So you have days from now or years from now. This is interesting depending on what uh, time field the data is placed, uh, based on. In this case, for most of the indexes, we are using creation date because it's the, the usual one to visualize information. But when you configure, configure indexes in Kibana, you can set uh, other fields to be used, used as time fields. And when you filter here with this time picker, the data is going to be filtered by uh, that uh, time field. We use always creation date to be consistent so you don't need to remember if one visualization or another is going to be filtered uh, based on different uh, things like, uh, I don't know, maybe for tickets, you could be interested on filtering by the closing date instead of the creation date. So by default, we use creation date. For some particular panels, we could do different things, but we try to keep everything remark creation date as the time field for, for most of the, the stuff we have. And finally, sorry, I forget to mention that you have also the option of setting exact uh, dates here with this absolute option so you can fix the, the time range. There are also these two arrows here. You can click on the arrows to go back to the uh, previous period of time. In this case, it is going to be one year uh, before. So if I go here, it's going to skip a year and uh, so on and so forth. So uh, the usual way to proceed is selecting six months or one year or two years to, to get a glance of the most recent data. But you can change it from any panel. If I go, for instance, to the performance one and open the efficiency, now I have here six months because it's the, the time I set. I could easily change this to five years and have a glance of all this uh, period of time, the whole period of time I'm setting up on technical. Okay, thanks. So we are going to have to wrap up 
because we have another meeting on the same channel in three minutes. <laughs> um, with regards to the affiliations, I can show my screen real quick. I have the management tool open, so I can show what that looks like, just one minute. What are you showing? How to manage the affiliations. Oh, okay. Because there was the question on how this is done. So here is Hotstall, the tool that um, this is used. So if I search for myself, um, for one, there is two of me here, so I can merge them. Say, okay, this is actually the same person. And then when I look here, it still says University of Nebraska at Omaha, which I'm no longer there. So I can say I ended being there in May. I can update this and then I add a new enrollment to say now I'm Victoria. And here I just have to select 2019. No. So that's how you manage a person that has multiple affiliations throughout time. Oh, cool. Could you um, copy the link into the chat so I can visit? Password protected so you don't actually have access to it. Oh, okay. Um, if you have the dashboard and you go to community affiliations the way to get here is you click on one of the hot style links and then if you have the password in your own installation you get right here oh i had just changed this i'd edited my own profile but this is the idea okay so i can share the link but it's not going to help you okay yeah, I'll try to do it on my own then. Thanks. All right. Um, now my question, Georg, is how long does it take to uh, update the information once you have updated your profile? Well, apparently infinitive because I've updated the profile in the past and somehow it was undone. Okay, so we have to stop because we are at the end of time and we do have another meeting starting on this channel at the same time. I'll stop the recording. Thank you. Thank you.